Pittsburgh's five and two. Russell Wilson starts really, really slow. He's getting booed, sure. and it looks bad. Mm -hmm. In the end, they win by a ton, and it's real easy to say, see? Well, how did yeah. this night play out yeah. in terms of Wilson getting more comfortable and looking like himself yeah. in the end? Yeah, I think in fairness to Russ, yeah, he hasn't played in nearly a year, basically. Right. So I do think when you look at that, you have to say maybe expect some, some rust. Mm -hmm. um, look, I think he benefited from Pickens doing a good job of fighting for the football, you know, a few times. <laughs> Prime example right there. Um, you know, he makes one really nice throw to Fryer Muth. I think we're looking at it here. He makes another nice throw uh, on a goal line fade. And so I do think the passing attack all of a sudden maybe looks different than it had looked. And so I, d I think probably have to – it's somewhere in between. It's not as, it's not as good as, as maybe Pittsburgh fans are thinking it could be with Russ. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, I, I think Russ probably – you know, maybe deserved a little bit longer leash than to get booed after three, three and outs. And so, and so I, I think we're probably somewhere in there. Look, the passing game will, will struggle at times. Uh -huh. Look, the, the Jets did them a lot of favors tonight, for sure. And so I, I think, you know, that will be the thing. Do we end up seeing Justin Fields in certain packages down in the red zone when things get tight and he's a better runner? Mm -hmm. Does that happen? Listen, if anyone can kind of pull that off, it's probably Mike Tomlin. In the end, you win easy, and you got the Giants coming in for Monday Night Football next week, and they are on the struggle bus. So are the Jets. They're 2-5. and five. Look, mm. Rodgers throws three picks in London. Sala gets fired, changes the whole talking points the following week. They lose on Monday night, pick to end it against Buffalo. They get Devontae Adams on Tuesday, changes the, the talking points for the rest of the week. There's no talking points next week, except yeah. that the Jets are 2-5. and five. I'm not saying it's Rodgers' fault, right. but they moved heaven and earth to get him and everybody that he wanted. What are we saying yeah. now about what the Jets are? Yeah, and at some point, he's got to make it right. You, you know, like, I mean, he does. And, and, look, we just talked about Mahomes. Look, Spagnuolo is helping him make it right when he's not playing his best. That's not going on with the Jets. So, at some point, Aaron's got to make it right. And there are plenty of opportunities. We're looking at some of them here. Thought he was quick to get rid of the football a few times because uh, High Smith was winning his one-on-one -on -one matchups. They had a few RPOs called. He wasn't able to find the throwing lane in critical moments, at, like at the end of the game. There, they had Adams open on a deep cross. They had Adams open on a shallow cross. He doesn't hit him. At some point, yeah, like it's like, look, we, we have put this around you now. Do guys around him need to play better? Yeah, absolutely. Garrett Wilson's got to catch a ball that hits him right in the chest and, and ends up being intercepted. But you know. I will say, when I watch them on offense, you know, Rodgers doesn't move the way he once did. And they feel a little stagnant on offense. Mm -hmm. I, you know, part of what made him so dangerous before was how he could create when he moved around. A little bit like the Mahomes stuff. Yeah. You know, when he gets going and it's the shovel pass and whatever it is, it, it, it's just it, it's creating offense. Aaron's not doing that right now. They had the eight-point lead, a tremendous pick there, a touchdown right before the half. Everything changed on a dime. It's wild. Like, they were, they were up and not in control, but up, and then they ended up getting uh, run out. T.J. Watt kind enough to, A, join me, and B, sit through me doing that highlight. T.J., I could look up and see, and I'm like, is he going to wait for me to do this highlight or leave? <laughs> so, thanks for your patience, brother. I appreciate it. I want to ask you about that Beanie Bishop pick. You're down. And he made a great grab. You're able to go in and score right before the half. Am I overstating it to say that that play really turned the direction of this game? Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, he had two of them uh, tonight. A uh, phenomenal player uh, with the one-hander. I think it was in the first yep. one, and uh, just the run after catch too. Almost got in the end zone. Super proud of Beanie. Um, undrafted guy making a name for himself. I mentioned in the highlight as we were watching that in, in the highlights earlier, TJ, before you joined us, you're going up against a Hall of Fame guy, and, and everybody knows what he is, and obviously you add a guy and, and Adams that he's got a special rapport with. As you got ready for this game tonight, TJ, and you're focusing on him, how's it different than if you're playing a, a good but not Hall of Fame type quarterback? What makes him different? I'd say just the, the things that he can do at the line of scrimmage. He can take the play clock down. He can undress the defense and uh, get his guys in the best situation to make plays. And uh, to be able to shut a guy out like that in the second half is huge. Uh, but a lot of credit goes out to our, our whole defense uh, and, and the plan that we had from our coaches going into the week. The other side of the football is not what you're concerned about, but obviously you got to play complimentary football. And the change this week to Russell Wilson was something we were all curious about. It was a slow start. 
This is a dude who's won a Super Bowl, but I have to believe it's the first time on the field in, in a real game wearing that uniform. I'm sure the nerves are big. How did things change for him as he got things cooking and ultimately you guys win and get 37 in the end? Did you sense that, that his confidence began to grow as the game went on? Yeah, I'm sure he got more comfortable. It was funny just talking to him in the locker room after the game. He was just just getting back into football shape, playing in an actual game for a first time in quite some time. Uh, it's tough to do. Uh, yeah. I thought he did a great job shaking the rust off and uh, getting into rhythm towards the as the game went on. I said on the show I did earlier this week when we had that sound from Justin Fields, I mean, he's 25 years old, TJ, but I thought the way he handled this showed an incredible amount of leadership. I see you shaking your head. I mean, for just to be about the team and not about the self, that's not the way it always goes in sports. What does he show in a moment like that when that's how he handles that situation? Yeah, we're all behind Justin, too. Um, we understand this is Mike T's decision at the end of the day. Um, we're trying to do what's best for our football team. Justin has handled everything um, exceptionally well, and uh, that goes a long way in the locker room. All right, let me close with this. Uh, five and seven, Coach Tomlin says you guys are in the business of winning. Business is good. Uh, where, what are you satisfied with most? What do you say five, uh, five wins and seven games in? I like this about our team right now, TJ. I'd say resiliency. Uh, we haven't started the games fast, but we've, uh, we've made corrections. Uh, we've been resilient when our backs are against the wall, and uh, I'm not complaining about five and two at all. Heck no. Uh, a little bit of extra time because it's a Monday night or we'll be there for countdown next week. Uh, we're not easy to we're, we're not hard to find. I should say we'll be sitting out there in the middle of you guys getting loose So look forward to seeing you saying hello. Appreciate the time tonight. Thank you. Awesome. See you Monday. Take care.